Hello and welcome to another Murders at Karlov Manor Draft. I'm Paul Chion, and we are currently sitting at lucky number 13. So still looking to try to hit rank one, still looking to do that climb. Baby steps, baby steps. Ooh, this was the draft from the other day. And let's go hop into another draft. Can we do better than the five and three from the other day and uh, try to move up? Just a little bit. Maybe we can get into the top 10 with a good draft. Now, before I click this ready button, I do want to say, if you wanted to support this channel in other ways, I did launch my Patreon channel. Shout out to all the current patrons. Thank you very much. The link is in the description below. And now I'm going to click the ready button. Okay. Something nice. Something nice. Well, that's a Krenko's Buzz Crusher. And you would look at this normal and you go, wow, four mana, four, four flying trampler with no downside, and you would think this card is incredible. You know what's weird about this card? It doesn't have that high of a win rate, surprisingly. Uh, the fact that you can kill, it's an artifact, and that you can kill it, and there are some incidental ways to kill this with, for example, Vengeful Creeper, make this card worse than it actually looks. The double red also makes it so that it's a card that you're not too interested in. So if I don't want to take a first pick Krenko's Buzz Crusher, what do I take? Do I take Glint Weaver, or do I take Novice Inspector? I think the Novice Inspector is the better card, okay? I just want to preface everything. I want to, but I am making an executive decision once again, okay? I want you all to stop calling it Red White Cheons, and I'm going to take the Glint Weaver here and try to draft another sweet green deck instead of taking the Novice Inspector here, okay? Let's take the Glint Weaver and see what happens. So if we took the Novice Inspector, we could have taken the Perimeter Enforcer as a nice follow-up, just a really great two-mana flying creature. It's really difficult to race. This card is very, very good in any aggressive white deck. So that would be the call. That would be the pick. For us, though, I am happy enough taking Flourishing Bloomkin. And honestly, if there was a pack with both of these cards, I'm not even sure which one I would take, to be honest. I think they're both very, very good. But given that we first picked the Glint Weaver, the Bloomkin is a perfect follow-up to that. Um, noting that uh, I, I guess it's impossible to tell whether or not a rare is missing in the pack anymore just because of how the collation is. You can have multiple rares in a pack. But a Flourishing Bloomkin to allow us to ramp into Glint Weaver is something that also some, that's something that I want to do. Extract the Confession is a decent common. That's probably the best of the remaining commons. But we're going to take the Bloomkin here and start green, green. Start with two green cards. And now I'm going to take the Makeshift Binding. Makeshift Binding is by far the best card in this pack. The next best card here is probably maybe a Leering Onlooker. Don't want to necessarily move into Black Green right away, but I believe that the Makeshift Binding is a much better pick. And remember, if we're going to be green-based, if we're going to be green-based, well, you can play any color you want. It might be green-white. We might splash the Makeshift Binding. We'll see how things go. And now that is a late Gleaming Gear Drake, but... It's a fourth pick Gleaming Gear Drake, and we have uh, two green cards and a white card. So this is simply the, uh, a card that's just too far away from what, from what we're trying to do. I typically have been enjoying drafting blue-green recently, but there's nothing here for even a blue-green deck, really. Push-pull is good and kind of more of an aggressive deck, like if you're red-white or you can play the pull side of it, but I don't know if that's what we're doing here. I suppose we, there is a world where we're black-green, and we can splash the white for the push. Hmm. Actually, you know, Gadget Technician might not be bad if I want to be blue-green. So let's take the Gadget Technician. Th thank you, Auto Pick. Thank you, Auto Pick. But this this could this could have been this could have been wrong. Moving on to this pack, we have the choice between Extract the Confession and Gravestone Strider. The Gravestone Strider does provide us a lot of mana fixing, but Extract the Confession is a good removal spell. And black felt like it could be open. Maybe I could have taken the black card in this previous pack here. But that is a fairly late extract. I wonder if I want to take the extract or do I take Gravestone Strider just to be able to cast all my other cards. You know, I'm just going to take Gravestone Strider. Unless black is super duper open, I'd rather be base green and not have my second color be black if possible. Moving here, this is a fairly weak pack. Nothing green here. So after the Glint Weaver and the Flourishing Bloomkin, the green has really been drying up. And I have noticed that people are drafting green a lot more recently. Green and white are both colors that don't seem to be especially open. 
But what do I take? It's not an investigate. Maybe it's the Sanguine Savior if I do end up green-white. We could still play this as a face-down card. Um, and now there's an on-the-job, but we're not really looking to go super wide. This does feel like a decent not on my watch deck because we're not looking to be super aggro. Any deck that's playing Glintweaver wants to make the game go a little take make the game go a little bit into the late game, and not on my watch is pretty good at that. Let's go ahead and take that. And then we'll take a crowd control warden as just a face down creature. If we have a few ways to go wide, especially if we're going to be white based and we get inside source stuff like that, the crowd control warden can be a de decent face down creature. That's a super late rune brand juggler, but I think it's just far too late to consider this card. Although there's nothing else in the pack. I guess I'll just take it. I don't think I'm ever playing agency coroner. Maybe there's a world where I take goblin mask maker actually. Is this card suspect up to one tar? Ah, I'll take the fine. I'll take the juggler. Whatever. It's pro it's probably not making my deck here. I'll take fanatical strength just because it's a pretty decent combat trick, and we don't have any tricks at the moment. Sanguine savior is also a fine option if you wanted to go black white. Is this is this a black white deck? Maybe. Maybe this is a black white deck. Actually, hold on. We haven't seen a whole lot of green. So I guess I can keep my options open. Rift Burst Hellion is something I can play. Yeah, we, oh, this is this is definitely uh, one of those super tricky drafts where uh, we have to tread carefully and figure out what it is that we want to be doing. Um, this pack is extremely weak for commons and uncommons. So I'm just going to take the Analyze the Pollen and we're just kind of going back and forth here in terms of what colors we want to be. Uh, but I think that's okay. I think that's okay. It's not like we're giving up too much by taking some of these other cards. Um, here we have the Arch Druid's Charm, which is a very good card. I don't know that I want a second copy of Glint Weaver in this deck, so it might just be the Charm here. Yeah, let's take the Charm. All right, I guess we're green. We're back to green. For, for a brief second, I considered not being green, but we're definitely green again. And let's put the cards like this. And ooh. Definitely a Tunnel Tipster deck. That's a makeshift binding as well, but we are super low on two drops. Um, I guess white is probably my second color. Gadget, we're pretty far away from casting Gadget Technician. But this does feel like exactly the type of deck where you want the Tunnel Tipster. And we have uh, some number of removal spells already. Huh. It's... Maybe it's still makeshift. Makeshift Binding is so good. Yeah, you know, I'm going to take Makeshift Binding. I, this is just unconditional, good, solid removal. I love Tipster, but I, I just... The life gain too. I think this card is just probably a little too good to take the Tipster over. Now we have the choice between Get a Leg Up and Locks It on Eavesdropper. I do like Get a Leg Up, but I think I want the Eavesdropper here. This will just help smooth out my deck, get ahead on cards, and I have a good number of spells already. So let's take the eavesdropper here. Wouldn't fault anybody for taking the uh, get a leg up there, by the way. But if I'm green-white, I don't think it's going to be too tough to pick up a fanatical strength or... Um, fanatical strength or auspicious arrival, which is definitely worse, but... How many combat tricks are you really looking to play, right? Here we'll take another Lockstead on Eavesdropper. Now, what do we have? Forensic Researcher I do like in the blue-green shells, but we've seen zero blue cards. So I'm just going to take Vengeful Creeper. We do need to fill out the rest of our curve. So happy enough taking Vengeful Creepers here. I just really like this card. I like it over Sample Collector and Hedge Whisperer. And I'm just kind of hoping not to play the Sanguine Saviors. This doesn't really look like an on-the-job deck, but I don't really like Airtight Alibi either. Uh, is there a chance we go wide? I mean, if we get a bunch of dog walkers and stuff, I guess. But would rather not play that. I, I do like Rift Burst Hellion. Just another mana sink in the late game. Don't really care for Haas the Vigilante. All right, so we've got our face down creatures covered now. And I'm glad I picked these up, mostly because I didn't really want to play Sanguine Saviors. I don't really like it very much in a green-white shell. 
even though we're not super heavy white. We're basically mono green. Oh, there's a card. Ooh, this pack is nice. There's a Wojak Investigator, which I believe is going to be the pick for us. Another Makeshift Binding, Repulsive Mutation, Private Eye for Detectives, Meddling Youths, which is great in red-white aggro. Nervous Gardener is a much-needed two-drop with Mana Fixing, and then there's Shock. Now, what, what we have laid out so far, we are basically just green and white, but we're going to slam the Wojak Investigator. This card is just great, great body, awesome creature to play on turn three. Very, very happy to have that in my deck. And now we have... Um, the choice between Fuss Bother, Museum Night Watch, and Granite Witness. I'm going to take Fuss Bother. Now, this isn't necessarily the most aggressive deck, but I think both sides are good enough where I can still play this as potentially a blowout trick if I'm ahead on board, or something in the late game that I can use to make a bunch of Thopters. So I'm going to take that over these other two face down creatures here. Now that's a Torch the Witness. So Torch the Witness is a pretty good card to splash. We have a Gravestone Strider. We have a Gravestone Strider and an Anal Analyze the Pollen. If we play a Mountain, that's three red sources. However, we're also in need of good two-mana creatures. So as much, much as I would like to splash the Torch to Witness, given our hole here, I'm going to take Sumala Sentry because we do have uh, six face-down creatures here already, right? So I think Sumala Sentry is going to make it in here, and I'm very happy to pick this up just, to, um, just for the curve purposes. Just for curve purposes. Here, again, I'm going to take a Season Consultant for mana curve reasons. Uh, like I, I'm very light on twos. Bloomkin is more of a card that I want to play on three anyways. I do like Escape Tunnel, but given that we did a little bit of waffling going back and forth early, and given the fact that I do need early plays, I'm going to take the Consultant over the Escape Tunnel. Um, earlier on in the draft, I probably would have taken the Escape Tunnel, but right now, we do want to make sure that we have enough twos. And here, I'm very happy picking up V2 Ghazi Inspector, another defensively slanted two-mana creature to go into our deck. So now, we have four twos. We're pretty happy about that. Pretty happy about that. And now we have Topiary Panther versus Not on my watch. So I don't really think I need the Topiary Panther here. I'm not really mana fixing very much. I'm just straight green-white. And I don't have a lot of collect evidence. So I think I'm just going to take another copy of Not on my watch. I want to try this card. I Because our deck isn't as aggressive, I want to see how good this card can be in this style of deck. All right, I guess I'll take the um, Topiary Panther now over the Fanatical Strength. I already have a couple of combat tricks already. So I think I just want the, um, the big body here. Ooh, and another Sumala Sentry. Very, very happy about that. Okay, this, this deck came to... Oh, and that's a card worth splashing. That is certainly a card worth splashing. Okay. This deck is definitely getting there. Wow. Those are some good late game gifts. Uh, now we are good on twos. And now I kind of wish I had an escape tunnel. But it's okay. It's okay. This is looking pretty solid here. Not broken by any means. But I think this is just a very solid green-white deck. No More Lies is not something that you really want to splash. But I do like the spells that I have here. Seven spells here. Analyze the Pollen and the Panther. Good number of face-down creatures to flip over for the Sumala Sentry as well. Could probably cut the Season Consultant almost, because I'm not really looking to attack with a bunch of creatures. And it's, it's a pick I don't regret because of the lack of twos that we had before. But now we're not looking like the type of deck that's wanting to attack with a bunch of creatures. And for that reason, I think it's something that I can cut. Put these here. The Panther gets us mana. Analyze the Pollen can get us Investigator or potential. I mean, I think it's probably going to get us Glintweaver a lot of the time. Yeah, I can probably cut Crowd Control Warden and Season Consultant. Put this here. We have a potentially up to five twos, but also uh, Not on My Watch acts as another thing to do early. And I'm going to keep the Gravestone Strider. Uh, just because it is a two, I think it's just better than Season Consultant because just often I'm not going to be able to attack for three, but this does give me an extra blue source to be able to cast the Repulsive Mutation. So uh, combining that, I have Analyze the Pollen, Topiary Panther, Island, and Gravestone Strider to give me four sources of blue mana for the um, Repulsive Mutation, which I think is fine. And with Analyze the Pollen, when you have a card like this, you can cut a land. So we can do something like this, but we definitely want all the green. I could still play this Crowd Control Warden. I am actually thinking it's better here. You know, often I don't draft green-white, 
But the fact that you can play this face up on turn five in this color combination probably still makes it better than probably Vengeful Creeper number three. So we're still not cutting a... F we're not adding a face down card, but I mean, two, four, five, seven still seems more than enough for this deck. So let's uh, give this a whirl. I think this deck is pretty solid. All right. Rank 13. We go first. Not the best hand, I will admit, but I'll keep. We're playing 16 lands with a Panther, and um, we're playing 16 lands with a Panther and a. Um, wow, my brain. Um, analyze the pollen. Which I think is okay. I kind of want to get value here with the Flourishing Bloomkin, but I'm not entirely sure. Furtive Courier, okay. Oh, man. Okay. Um, going to play the Rift Burst Hellion face down. Really need a Plains here. Planes would be phenomenal if we can just slam the Wojak Investigator. We have six white sources, but remember, we also have Gravestone Strider, Analyze the Pollen, and Panther. So that's up to nine white sources. But the card that we would draw want to draw the most here is either Basic Planes or Analyze the Pollen to be able to play the Investigator. You know, honestly, maybe we got a little too greedy there. Maybe we should have just played 17 lands. I, I always tell everybody to play 17 lands, and then I just didn't, so... That one's on me. This one, I think we're just going to force the combat trick here. I don't have much else going on. And this prevents them from playing another creature. And I do not mind uh, getting my Rift Burst Hellion into the yard here. Griff Knot Tracker. Okay. Give me a Planes. They should have played that. Ahead of time, right? Because then they could have hit me for two. All right, we drew planes. That's amazing. So let's go ahead and play the Wojak Investigator. Really, really great for us. Although they'll, they'll probably be able to empty out their hand to the point where I'm not going to be able to get a clue here. Although they did play Escape Tunnel. We have the Vengeful Creeper, if they do have a makeshift binding here for the Wojak Investigator. Out cold, okay. I mean, that's fine. They get to get in for some damage, but not something I'm overly concerned about here. Um, huh. I do have an interesting choice here. I can either attack them for and get a couple of lands here. Or just run out a face up vengeful. Oh no, actually, no, that's what I want to do. I'm gonna attack for two, play a face down vengeful creeper, and then play not on my watch. That'll also allow me to empty out my hand to potentially draw more cards here off the um, the Wojak Investigator, which is also something that I want to do. Case of the Crimson Pulse. Okay. They discarded Hotshot Investigators, which would have been pretty good here. But they're incentivized to um, empty out their hand. Another perimeter enforced. So my question is, do I care about racing here or do I just kill the bigger creature? I think I'm just going to kill the bigger creature here. Because these creatures can't really attack me once I get V2 Gazi Inspector going. And I was able to uh, get my little clue there, which is very good. And I have the Vengeful Creeper to also kill the case if I absolutely need. They have one mana available. What do I want to do this turn? I think I just want to bash for a lot this turn and not miss my land drops. And this ensures that I can flip my Vengeful Creeper if they play all the cards in their hand. So yeah, I'm just going to do this main phase because this gets in for one more point of damage because I get to play the forest for my turn as well. And then we can attack like this. Wow, they're chumping with Perimeter Enforcer. At 21 life. Is this a sweeper maybe? I feel like you just take the damage, right? 
could be no witnesses, or they could just be thinking, hey, if I flip case of the Crimson Pulse here, I'm going to be up so many cards, that's going to be my, my avenue to victory. So that's something that they could also be considering here. Oh, geez, that's an Ezrim. That is most certainly an Ezrim. Okay, well. I mean, it doesn't get indestructible, at least. So let's go ahead and attack with Vengeful Creeper and the Bloomkin. Uh, I don't... I care about killing the case just yet. So I probably want to just... continue adding to my board. Because this does kind of incentivize them to... Incentivize them to just like play everything that they have, right? So I'm going to draw a card here first, just to see what I find. Uh, can't cast that one, sadly. All right, we'll play this face down, and we'll see what they do. The thing is, if they crack their clue, they're not using their case, right? So... Oh my gosh, it really was a sweeper. Holy cow. Really? Okay. And now I can't kill Case of the Crimson Pulse. Let's see what they discard. I mean, Bloomkin does hit pretty hard. Oh, they just chose not to discard. Hey, that's, that's okay as well. If I can find a blue source here, that would be great. Analyze the Pollen, Gravestone, Strider. They do have three cards in hand, so they probably have to play something. But if they do, the Ezrim becomes vulnerable if they play a face-down card. Huh. I'm going to chump. They kept... They, so now I can attack for a lot. And I get a clue here as well? That's an interesting... Oh, make your move. Okay. Sure. Yeah, and there's not much I can do. Oh, that's a blue source. That is a blue source. So, the question is, do I want to play Fuss Bother here or keep up Repulsive Mutation, right? I think it's Repulsive Mutation. And if they don't cast anything, I can just flip over my creature. That creature I don't care about. I imagine they want to play the last card in their hand. Just to be able to flip the case. Maybe it's a removal spell. Oh, this is wonderful. And we can do this for... So we have seven mana, so we can do this for five. Oh, yes. <laughs> is that just game? I have a 7-9 Flying Vigilance creature. <laughs> uh. Oh, and Analyze the Pollen. What can we get? We have a Glint Weaver in our deck. But I just want to keep up Fuss, I think. And the Flip, because I want to kill this. Yeah, okay. This costs six to flip up. So I can actually flip this up and cast Fuss Bother. Or Fuss, rather. Okay. I guess I don't need to cast Fuss Bother now. They're going to gain some life here, and we're going to be really, really far ahead, I feel, on board.
All right, now let's go ahead and analyze the pollen for eight. So six, seven, eight. Let's go ahead and get glint weaver, I think. Yep. Analyze the pollen is a great magic card. They're gonna crack some clues. They need to find an answer to this investigator. And I also have bother and I have glint weaver. But it all starts with first finding an answer to this investigator. All right, novice inspector will not get it done. I mean, they have a solid deck, right? Blue white splashing case or splashing towards the witness and L-timed explosion. They're drawing a bunch of cards. They have decent fixing. Give that to me. <laughs> No moral victory for you. All right, our rank stayed the same. Our rank stayed the same. All right, let's um, let's probably just add another land here, right? Let's just do that and cut something. It's probably just one of these expensive face down creatures. Yeah, we can cut a Hellion. We have a V2 Gazi Inspector. We have a Glint Weaver. And then having the one Hellion is pretty nice. Like I said, I really valued the Vengeful Creeper. I probably overvalue it, even though it's it looks kind of mediocre, but just, I'm telling you, disenchant effects that come attached to a body sometimes, um, in a lot of matchups, just do so much work. Being able to eat a makeshift binding buried in the garden, sometimes a clue when they're tapped out or a satchel, goes a long way. Goes a long way. But up to 17 lands now. Up to 7. We do have some number of good face down cards. Don't want to be missing out on our, our manas. Here, I'm just going to cast this turn one, go get my island. Have plenty to do here. We have two ways to search for creatures, which is pretty sweet. Uh, I think I'm going to wait on the Bloomkin here. We don't have the most aggressive draw. So let's go ahead and play the Museum Nightwatch here. Slice from the shadows. All right, now we can play the um, flourishing bloomkin face down. Hopefully, hopefully this one doesn't die, and we get value out of this one. Also, because I kept green mana up, they're less likely to use removal on this one. Okay, I was only saying that because it's pretty likely. There's a good chance that this card is um, nervous gardener, but. They're stuck on lands. All right, let's just play a 4-4. A four, four. I kind of, I want to see if they use a removal spell here. What I'm probably going to do here, just to, um, wow, they actually unloaded their hand here. Interesting. What I was going to do was charm for the Wojak Investigator, but they, maybe they can unload their hand in time? I'm not sure. This is actually really interesting because they used a couple of slices. I feel like they would have murdered this crowd control warden. This is going to put us to two cards. They're going to draw a card and go up to five. If they draw a land, they go to four. And then they play a spell, they go to three. Or I can just use eavesdropper and then save this for as like a really great combat trick. Yeah, let's just do this instead. And honestly, at this point in the game with this much mana, getting a glint weaver is probably better anyways, just because it has more more board presence. Wow, and they went land soul innervation. So had we gotten the Wojak Investigator, had we gotten the Wojak Investigator, um, that would have been a lot worse for us. Because they would have just killed that. Okay, we have not on my watch. They're milling themselves. Oh, they milled murder and a land. And let's go ahead. Is now the time to play it? Probably. I think we're just getting the spider, to be honest.
The spider seems too good here. The question is, do I use not on my watch on one of these cards? Is it the repeat offender or is it the fester leech? Let's do the fester leech. Because this one, if they suspect it, then they can't really block with it. Okay. Let's go ahead and get Glint Weaver. Play it. I think I like one and two here. Unless this is Night Drinker Moroi. Ugh, I guess I should have put one more. I guess I should have put one more. All right, well, we're out of action now. And they were the one that was stuck on lands. So we might be in some trouble. We've drawn all of our, we've drawn a bunch of mana sources at this point. No, what? Oh, wait. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I mean, I'm attacking. If they have Toxin Analysis, they have Toxin Analysis. They can block Toxin Analysis and then cast Leering Onlooker. All right, we take one from the Enervation. Then we pass. What was the face down card that we got rid of? I don't actually remember. Oh, it was one Rift Burst Hellion. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's try to eat one. Boom. Big Rift Burst Hellion. Very, very timely draw. Man, our, our ranking, we're kind of stuck here on 13. This is, uh, I guess, the weeding out spot. Okay. How does this hand look? Uh it's a little bit slow, but I think I'm going to keep. I don't know if I need to analyze the pollen here. We have so much mana. It can get us a planes, but we don't have any white cards in our hand right now. Okay, and there's our planes. So I guess to analyze the pollen in this particular hand is going to be something that we're looking to use for the late game. Could be a reason to play the... Um, Could be a reason to play the Rift Burst Hellion because it costs more mana. Oh, our opponent drew a card off Candlestick and didn't find lands. We need to put the pressure on quick then. Just because we are super flooded. Did they find a land? They did. No, they didn't. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, let's try our best to punish them. But we drew another land. So... I'm still a little bit scared here. I'm not going to lie. Like, they drew their land, and now we are just... It's still not the best situation to be in. That, however, is pretty good. Let's crack the clue. I think they're in a desperate enough situation where they likely would have attacked, uh, blocked with the face down card. So I'm just going to wait a turn for the Vengeful Creeper. And now I have the choice of either fighting with Arch Druid's Charm here, depending on what they play. If they play Detective Satchel, we can kill it. Although I guess we can also flip up the Vengeful Creeper and kill it that way. Um, surveillance Monitor. Okay. I guess they get a Thopter out of that. I think I'm going to hold on to the Archdruid's Charm. I think this is going to be a very good combat trick. Let's mute the opponent. All right, how do we want to do this? Um, probably just flip up my face down card and kill the Thopter.
This still puts a big 5-5 into play. We still have a lot of other options. Not on my watch doesn't look so good here, though, I will say. Oh, Torch the Witness. All right. Wow, they somehow have now way less cards in hand than we do. <laughs> okay. Feels like a double creature turn. Let's just play this one face up. We can analyze the pollen next turn for Glintweaver. We'll see what they do here. They have a lot of mana up, which is a little bit concerning. I'm just going to attack with my Crowd Control Warden. Because I can flip this up. They might have a trick, but I do have the Archdruid's Charm. So they have the chases on. I think I want to use the Archdruid's Charm here now to kill it. So I'm going to put a counter on my Museum Nightwatch, I think, so I can have uh, more evenly distributed power. And this is better than exiling the enchantment because I get an extra counter. So no, no clue for them. All right, now they're digging. Galvanize, okay. Wow, that's really good. I think I'm just going to do that instead. It gives me some surveils as well. Uh, great. Yeah, I don't want either of these cards. And I think they have too many cards in their graveyard for my Gravestone Strider to matter. So let's do this. And now I can set it up even better where I can go analyze the pollen for Gravestone Strider. Not Grave, uh, for Glint Weaver, and then just like distribute the counters on my flyers if I really want. And post combat red herring. Okay. All right. This has gotten interesting. So getting the Wojak Investigator, definitely not good. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and cast this. Collect Evidence 8. Let's get Glint Weaver. Let's cast it. Ah, <sighs> okay. Um, one counter on Museum Nightwatch makes some sense. And then maybe two on Aethopter. If they have a shock for this, that's fine. Let's attack with these two. If they, if they trade the Cold Case Cracker with my 3-3, three, three, that's okay because then I can start attacking with my other two Thopters is kind of my thought process. And if they want to kill the Museum Nightwatch here, they're going to have to double block. Really interesting that they block my Museum Nightwatch. Okay. They might have a Sweeper here. They might have the four mana rare again. Certainly feels that way. At least we still have something left over. Ugh, that is annoying. All right. Yep, they're going to come back. They're going to claw back. If they have something that, that has four, that, if they have something that costs four that they're discarding here. Yep. I mean, it is what it is. Not much we can do there. That is definitely the sweeper that blows me out the most. Just because you ha you also have some for some level of control over uh, how how like things go down there six ten eleven okay eleven lands no more lands please <laughs> all right 
Is it just me? Does every blue red deck you play against seem to have? But like the satchel makes sense. I just I, I I've run into ill-timed explosion a lot. It's like, oh, what's the only card that can get him out of this? <laughs> that's a that's a bold no block. Yeah, I think they're going to run away with the game now. They should have cracked the clue first. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we couldn't put enough pressure. And, uh, you know, I, I've been trying this card. Just going to throw this out there. Not a fan. Not a fan. Maybe my deck needs to be even more controlling. All right, I think we're dead. Yeah. Oh, well, that gives us hope. I'm going to crack this just to find another play. A Vengeful Creeper would be great. Okay, that's also something. We can use not on my watch on the hotshot investigators. All right. Another face down card. Okay. I wonder what they have here. I mean, it's got to be something, right? So I, I just shouldn't. Going to use not on my watch here on the 4-4. And, uh... But, I mean, they clearly have a spell if they're going to attack with this. So do they have another spell? What is this card in their hand? If they attack with the Fugitive Codebreaker... Chase is on, maybe? Oh, sure. That's what it was. All right, now we're dead. All right, well, our deck gave us a chance. Um, our opponent had a good blue-red deck, and I think the sweeper was probably the only way that they can get back from that. Try to get as much value as we could from all of our cards, but it was not quite enough. Ooh. Going up against a number seven player. That's exciting. Okay, oppose, opponent going first. We're going to keep this hand. Let's go ahead and get the island. All right, green, white, Somala sentry. Very, very good. I'm just wondering whether or not I want to run out this Bloomkin here on turn two, just to keep pace. Because if I play, if I don't play something here, I'm kind of fearful that I'm going to fall behind. And I do have most of the mana that I need. So let's play it face up. I mean, they're probably playing a face down card. Oh. Easy, easy block. All right. Um, let's attack. I doubt that they're blocking here. Now the question is, do I want to play the sentry or a face down card? Probably the face down card. The question is, which one? Probably the crowd control warden because we can flip it up. Although I probably shouldn't have played well planes, I probably should have played. Oh, that, is that a nervous gardener? That's going to be a blowout if it is. It's it's definitely a nervous gardener. Okay, well, this is kind of the nuts. It's going to be really hard to beat this. I mean, they just flipped it up. They just got four power on the board. This is how you hit rank seven. <laughs> 
Oh, man. Okay. This is how you hit rank 7. Yeah, I'm not even entirely sure what I can do. I'm going to play the Sumala Sentry and just pass, I guess. And I'll counter something if I absolutely have to. I'll put a Sentry in front of their Sentry. And then, end of turn, I can um, cycle my Topiary Panther. I mean, I can honestly... I can double block the Sentry, but... Any combat trick blows me out, so I guess this is the only block that we have. Gonna get another forest here to make my Bloomkin bigger, probably. On the job. Okay, I guess we have to counter that. Alright, well that was their turn at least. Ooh, and that is a makeshift binding. Okay. We are slowly clawing back into this. Let's go ahead and get Forest here. And then now we have Makeshift Binding. The question is, what do we kill? Right? Nervous Gardener is doing the most damage currently. But Sumala Sentry is the one that's most damaging long term, especially with two in play. I'm going to kill the Sentry. And I'm going to attack with these two. Because they're not really blocking. Sentry will block the sentry here. And then next turn we can flip up the crowd control warden potentially. Alright. They're not attacking with the sentry this time. Have we potentially stay? Ooh. And just a face up crowd control warden too. Okay. So we can flip up ours, and that'll also be a 6-6. Six, six. And we drew a forest, which is really great. Um, so no attacks from us. And I think this is going to make it hard for them to attack us, unless they have uh, fanatical strength. Because they know that our face-down card can be any number of cards. Right? It can be Rift Burst Hellion. It could be anything. But I think this is going to stop them from attacking us. Yep. Okay. So I think we, we may be stabilized here. Uh, they do have a Griff Knot Tracker, but our Sumala Sentry becomes a 2-4 after we flip over this Crowd Control Warden, which is going to flip over as a 7-7. Seven, seven. So let's flip this up. All right. All right. Hold. Hold, 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 hold. This is probably a good opportunity to cast Bother here. Add more to the battlefield, and... I mean, this is basically a 5-4. I guess I'll keep it, right? Oh, no. Case of the Locked Hothouse. That was unexpected. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's really rough because now, now there's so much pressure and I just, oh man, any random creature would have been okay, but this is, I don't think we're going to beat this card. Like when you play this on an empty board or on an even board, like what do you even do? I think I just need to try to force trades. Yep. I'm going to trade my 7-7 seven, seven for their 6-6 six, six just so I can try to get in with some of my other creatures here. Let's play both of them face down. And here I thought just keeping a 5-4 on top was pretty good. Silly me. Yep. Yep. Oh, it's a spell on top. They have a spell on top. Where it's 6 Let's see, that's going to be a 7, 8. 4, 5, we have 7 mana. God, this is so brutal. I don't know that they're going to attack us here. I kind of want to spend the mana to flip this up over playing the eavesdropper. So that's what I'm planning on doing here. Oh, wait! 
No, 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 I messed up! Karlov Watchdog! Oh, no! Oh! Karlov Watchdog has text. It sure does. I mean, they have 10th District Hero, and they can make everything indestructible. Yeah, that, that was my bad. I, I didn't even read that line of text. Oh, no. Not sure we were going to beat 10th District Hero anyways, because they can double collect evidence and make everything indestructible and attack me, and I'm at 6. But they're just going to build a really big board here, too. And there is not that much we can do. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're dead. We're dead. There's just... That was all kinds of mistakes made, but that being said, I don't think we would have beaten that board, but that one's on me, um, the Karlov Watchdog, but everything else, I will say, leading to that point, I thought we did, given their start of double Sumala Sentry into Nervous Gardener, I thought we did a decent job of weathering the storm and putting us at least at parity until they dropped Case of the Log Tot House on the play. Bit of a defensive hand. Going to try to hold this, pal analyze the pollen if I can, and use the Topiary Panther to land cycle. Ooh, Wojak Investigator is a nice one. And I will, I'm definitely going to cycle here. Just feels like we have enough going on, and this puts a six drop in our graveyard. Let's go ahead and just go get another forest. And jam the investigator. Uh, we have too many cards in hand right now because they went one drop, two drop. But still just a decent blocker. There's no combat trick in the format that gets me here if they attack. So definitely blocking. Face down card from the opponent. Yeah, they don't have an attack. All righty. Um, nothing really worth makeshift binding ing. So let's attack for two. And I will pass. So yeah, I really want to get value here from the investigator, but we can't. But because I have not on my watch, like my blocks are pretty, pretty easy. So that's, that's the only, that's the really, that's the one good thing at least. Okay. Let's continue attacking. Let's play eavesdropper. Now we don't have Loxida. Now we don't have not on my watch available. But we still have green mana up. We'll see what they do. All right. It looks like uh, this feels like an out cold. And of course, there's not much we can do about that. It's not out cold. This could be defenestrated phantom, but I do have fuss bother. Coveted falcon. Are they going to give me something? Nothing. Oh, they're just going to make a 1-4 blocker. Yeah, that's fine. Let's play Sumala Sentry, and then we'll just pass as well. Nothing worth makeshift bindinging just yet. But yeah, we're both just kind of staring at each other. <laughs> the way I can pressure them is by trying to empty out my hand, but my my... Like, my hand is not very good at doing that. So, I, I don't know. I just want to hit my land drops to cast Bother here, probably. Okay. V2 Gazi Inspector and another makeshift binding. Hmm. I mean, here's the thing. Do I kill this 1-4 just so I can continue attacking with the Investigator?
Is that too much of a short-term play? The thing is, I just don't have anything to really do here. Especially with four open mana. I don't. I kind of don't want to go all in on the Investigator, I guess. But I do have a backup makeshift binding, so maybe this is okay. It just allows me to still be somewhat aggressive here. <laughs> okay. They have a blocker. They got me. So my question now is what creature do we want to get with Analyze the Pollen? Is it still the spider? And if so, do I want to get it now or do I want to get it later? Let's just get it now. I don't think anything is going to beat the spider here just for late game, like a late game threat. So I'm just going to get that. I think it's just, it spreads the power counters. It just does a lot of work. All right, Forensic Researcher. That one is pretty annoying. That's another card I'd be interested in killing. Although they don't have that much fuel for it. I mean, they're down to one card and they're just not doing a whole lot. Sure, I'll keep both. All right, a Museum Night Watch, which does not do much here. You know what I actually think I'm going to do here? I'm not going to make the Investigator huge. I'm just going to I'm just going to play the Glint Weaver here and just put it put a counter on each of my flyers. I mean, they just have the Coveted Falcon to block, right? So this allows us to get some damage in. Okay, Wojak Investigator down. Honestly, I don't really care, right? Like, I'm not getting clues off of this card anyways. Auspicious Arrival too. Okay, that's a big turn. That is a big turn. They got, they got to cast all their combat tricks. They get to draw their card. We still have an eavesdropper on top, which is really good. Let's attack with four in the air. I'm going to save this makeshift binding, though. I'm just taking it a little bit slower. And then my plan here is to... Oh my gosh, did you find another auspicious arrival? Come on. Okay, sure. I wonder if I want to... I'll probably... I'll play this. And usually it's correct to just distribute the counters evenly, so I'm just going to... Making a 2-4 reach is pretty good. So I'll just put it here. Next turn I can uh, crack this clue, turn these into 4-4s, four and then just... Tr try to just force them to make some uncomfortable blocks. Those auspicious arrivals have been very good, definitely. All right, I'm going to go after that face down card. I don't know what it could be, but in the late game, this probably just seems like the best thing to go for. What is it? Oh, it was just the Museum Night Watch. Another... So we have a bunch of face-down creatures.
They're probably tapping down my eavesdropper. Maybe not on my watch, I just want to play like exactly one copy. I'm okay with some like quote, some quote unquote bad, bad blocks here, just to clear the board. They've definitely done a good job of just surviving, though, I will say. Credit to them. But, <laughs> okay. They've seen enough. They've seen enough. Okay, we have four wins, I think? Three wins? I'm not sure. Oh, this could have been a knot on my watch. On the draw, turn to Somala Sentry. I think I got to keep. Okay. Always scary when the opponent just plays a one drop, especially Snarling Gorehound. But we have pretty good. Oh my gosh. Into 10th District Hero. All right. Being on the draw this game, not great. All right. We'll, we, we will try to match them. We will try our best. We have a good curve ourselves, but can certainly just get run over here. We will see what happens. But this is a really fast start. I am just blocking Sumala Sentry on the 10th District Hero if they choose to attack. And then we're going to go Investigator into Eavesdropper. If we draw another land, we'll just face up Vengeful Creeper. We're just going to try to get them pound for pound. Yeah. Oh, Neighborhood Guardian too? What? What kind? This is just... Oh, and they kept? Look at these premium... Premium creatures. That must be a really good card because they could have used that to collect evidence. If we don't draw land turn five, we can still cycle the panther, get the island, and then play like Rift Burst Hellion face down. But we are just doing everything we can to just not die. So the Snarling Gorehound can no longer attack us. If they attack us, it's like 100% Toxin Analysis. Which is pretty tough. We'll see how they attack. I mean, if they they should have targeted if they have toxin and out, I mean I'm just blocking, right? Yeah. All right, eavesdropper. We're matching them. We had we had pretty solid two, three, and four as well. But it's it's it is one of those weird spots where if they just have anything, they can still just get us. Because we can never leave up mana. We're just tapping out every single turn. But they're down to two cards, but and Gorehound is doing a lot of work here. Gorehound is doing a lot of work. Now the investigator continues to attack, which is nice. What happens if I draw a land? What do I do? It's probably face up large monster. It's probably face up large monster. I mean, this is just a 7-7. Seven, seven. Like, how does one attack through a 7-7? Seven, seven? <laughs> Let us play the 7-7. Seven, seven. All right, they got a flyer. They have one unknown face-down card. We have the sentry to block the savior if they represent some kind of trick. And now we might be in an okay spot where we can just start facing down stuff to get some value with the Sumala Sentry. You know, I've been seeing more people play this card. I wonder if it's actually good. Hmm. Hmm. 
I am going to continue attacking with the investigator. I am going to cycle this, get an island, and I'll just play eavesdropper. The next turn, we can probably start jamming with the eavesdroppers. Now, uh, the 10th district hero can turn into a 4-4 now. So that is something to be mindful of. Still think it's a pretty decent attack and it lets us draw cards. Lets us play some offense and defense at the same time. Slimy Dual Leech is not bad. Slimy Dual Leech is, especially on Snarling Gorehound. I mean, I mean, like, I don't really care about flipping this and getting value. Oh, oh, they turned it into a 3-2. I see. Oh, but they can't... <laughs> they can't target it, though. I see what they were trying to do, but this is not going to work. Because now it has 3 power. So now they can target Slimy Dual Leech. They can use Slimy Dual Leech... Uh, they can use Slimy Dual Leech to force some kind of a trade, I guess. If they target the Gorehound, I'm just taking it. But if they're targeting any of the other creatures, I think I'm okay trading just an elephant for one of the one of any like all these creatures are better than mine. Yeah, I think they wanted to not pump. They, what they should have done is not pump the savior and use the dual leech to give the savior plus one plus zero oh, and death touch, and it, then I guess it would trade for my sentry and they would gain a bunch of life. Now they have to figure out what they want to actually trade with. I think it's just target gorehound. And hit me for two. Like, I'm blocking the unicorn, like, all day, every day. All right. Ooh, that's actually not bad. Probably 10th District Hero is the... is the really annoying creature. Yeah, I believe I want to do that. No messing around. I'm going to do the I'm going to do it there, and then I'm going to play the vengeful creeper face down because now because then if they have I don't know. I uh, know you can't use makeshift binding to kill this, never mind. But and I guess I can flip up both, so maybe it was better for, to get the Rift Burst Hellion. But Black White can have some decent enchantments. Alright. That was the correct target previously. Yeah, maybe I should have played the Hellion face down. Ooh, I get a clue. Ooh, and analyze the Pollen. Okay. A lot of nice options here. Now I kind of don't want to attack because this could be a Basilica Stalker and they can double block. Hmm. What can this be? Do I, do I just... I think I'm just going to go ahead and crack a clue. I need to start cashing in some of these clues, I think. Then let's attack with the eavesdropper. I don't think black-white has a creature that's bigger than a 4-4. Four, four. And I kind of want to keep the um, Glintweave Glint Weave Spider or whatever as, as a surprise card. So I think I'm just going to play the Rift Burst Hellion face down and then pass. If they empty out their hand so that I can't, use, I can't do my Wojak Investigator... Okay, we'll see what this is. It was a defenestrated phantom. Yeah, okay. I'm glad I didn't attack with the Wojak Investigator. Okay. Now we have Rift Burst Hellion and Vengeful Creeper face down. We'll see how many cards they play this turn. Um, and that'll, that'll help determine whether or not we crack these clues. Because, of course, we have the Wojak Investigator in play. Due diligence. All right. It's pretty big. It's a 4-3. It might double block. Leering on look. Yeah, double block here doesn't seem bad. It's a 4-3, right? 
And I'm not getting extra clues out of this. So I think the investigator has done its work. Honestly, don't mind. They're at 12 too. Okay. What on earth? Okay. Let's think here. Yeah, I mean, this block makes sense. Don't touch the slimy dual leech. I can also double block the Gorehound, but this is just going to be a 1-1 one -one next turn. So I don't think I care too much. Although I do have Vengeful Creeper to kill the due diligence, but it's fine. All right, let's go ahead and just get... Um, let's go in and get the spider now. It seems pretty good here. Four, eight. Glint Weaver. Let's play it. And go like... Um... Sumala Sentry is not attacking. Definitely one of each here, so that they can both attack this turn. Let's make this a 4-4. Gains us some more life. Let's attack for 6. They don't have good blocks here. They go to 10. We can flip either of these up. We have a nice board. Don't care about these slimy dual leeches. We are going to be well ahead in any type of racing situation. Like they can attack me for five here. We go to 11 and then we can attack and flip stuff over. Oh, not on my watch was not a bad draw. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine mana. All right. I could have attacked with the sentry, but it does get a plus one, plus one counter. But I think they're going to have to at least block with one creature. They're probably going to block with both. And then I can flip my stuff over and then still block and cast not on my watch to prevent all kinds of shenanigans. Because they have a pretty easy block on like Sumala Sentry plus... Uh, maybe it's not that easy. Maybe I should have attacked. This is definitely a moment where, I f where maybe I should have attacked. They wouldn't have died, but... I mean, they're super dead here unless they have a sweeper. We have not on my watch with a bunch of ginormous creatures. That's not going to get it done. Wow. All right. Well, so they had a really nice start, but we were able to f keep pace because we also have strong cards of our own. But I think like a well-timed removal spell or combat trick would have gotten it done. They just didn't have anything. I mean, this is just not going to be better ever, so I'm just going to do it. And I'm happy I'm playing just the one copy. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're dead. All right. That was a good game, though. Good game. Good back and forth. We had to kind of come back there, stabilize. Searching for that spider often with Analyze the Pollen. Analyze the Pollen, putting in a lot of work. We've used it at times to get mana, and we've used it at times to get our spider. Oftentimes in the late game, that's kind of what you want to get, right? You're not searching for Wojek Investigator turn 7 of the game that much. Uh, we go first, sitting at 4 and 2. I'm going to keep this. Could use some face down cards. Glint Weaver in the opener always looks a little bit not ideal. But I don't think we can ship this. We have two twos and a makeshift binding. Just kind of want the games to go a little bit longer. I'm going to just get that off the battlefield now. Attack. We've been, we've been battling against a lot of Sumala Sentry nonsense. Let's 
might be a game where we just cast Bother. Not on my watch. Could be okay here if they want to get a little chippy. Kind of hard to attack into two 1-3s though. Against a green-white deck with Gravestone Strider up. Okay, well. Hey, this is the first time in the history of Magic where... No, that's not true. But my not on my watch will actually do something. I'll kill the 3-3, three, three, why not? Um, hmm. <laughs> Sneaking in every point of... What are my face down cards? I have so many. Where are you? Where are you? My Sumala sentries have been terrible. Next turn, I might just attack with everything and cast Fuss. Just to make them a little more powerful. This is- we're in a really awkward spot where, like, everything is a bad draw. Like, land, we can't play anything. I mean, I guess, like, action spells are not bad. Okay, well, that that was actually pretty good. God, this is so... I don't know what to do. Do I just put three counters on my creatures? Is that is that where we're at right now? Oh, these are ideal blocks. <laughs> that was ideal. <laughs> okay. Well, we made something happen by being aggressive. And then they play a 5-5 five -five and we're back, back in trouble. Okay. It's a 2-4. Yeah, we can still attack with everything, right? Oh, yeah, that does get us, doesn't it? We can't really kill it in response. All right, they got us. I'm wondering if I'm supposed to use this Arch Druid's Charm to, like, get a land. That seems so weak, though. I don't think I'm going to. I'm just going to try to naturally draw lands here. With two cards, okay, you know what? I'm just not going to get combat tricked here. <laughs> they have two cards in hand. I mean, it's a green-white deck. It's probably more combat tricks. Okay, there it is. This leaves us, like, plus three, plus three doesn't do it here, which is good. And then I have a plus four, plus four here. Novice Inspector, good card. This seems like it's going to be a really good combat trick. We'll see what they do. Ooh, I want them to makeshift binding my Glint Weaver so that I can mid-combat exile it and put counters on everything. That would be nice. They're going to kill the Gravestone Strider. Yeah. All right. Ooh. That does make things interesting. I'm going to play it face down first. Because that adds, that makes things just more interesting for them in terms of how they want to block. But I don't think I want to be the first person to flinch. Yeah. Flipping this up wouldn't have done anything. I mean, I'm still going to do it end of turn, probably. They have one card in hand. It is a face down card.
Let's use our mana while we can. Let's just hope this isn't a Rift Burst Hellion. That's kind of my hope. Crowd Control Warden we can deal with. It is a Rift Burst Hellion. I'm extremely sad. Okay. Uh, we can still kill it. I mean, it, it's just we lose our Glint Weaver. All right, so... Let's do this, uh, target this, and then target this. This kills the inspector. So they still have no board, and we still have three lethal attackers. Yeah, Archer Ridge Charm is obscene. Like, bite spells are already good, but being able to do it at instant speed just completely ruins combat. I mean, this, it's basically, uh, I don't know if any of you played Limited back in the day, but Clear Shot was kind of a similar situation. Okay. Well, we have Investigator on the draw, so might not be able to draw some cards. You know what you want with Smallest Gentry? You want a bunch of Nervous Gardeners. You want things that flip over for cheap. We have Sanguine Saviors, but given that that's double white, it's just kind of tough. But we have a hand with double with Sumala Sentry, Wojak Investigator, Makeshift Binding with three lands, plus a Gravestone Strider. So very, very solid. Never ever shipping that back. If they have a clunky hand, maybe this investigator does something, but the way that you look at this card is just don't don't just assume that you're gonna draw a bunch of cards. Just kind of play it and look. Even if you don't draw cards, you got a three mana two four flying vigilance creature, right? That's great. That is great. I can't wait for the um, nice into bite down on crime or makeshift binding on the Wojak investigator. All right, so they're representing auspicious arrival or some kind. Of, yeah, of course. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Good for you. Let's play face down card. We're not blocking, so we'll just attack. Well, maybe we should block. I don't know. No, I'm not going to block. Executive decisions have been made. I'll definitely block. Maybe I'll block when I have the Archridge Charm up. Although I kind of want to use that to kill the Makeshift Binding. But I consider playing the Gravestone Strider out. Oh, God, my mana is just being... Uh, this is just so... This is just so... Ugh. Doesn't feel great. I just I just feel like this is such a bad spot to block. I'm going to play... You know, I should have maybe done this last turn. I'm going to play this, keep two mana up, and pass. They might also just not attack me. That, that sets us up for more, more options. The reason why I didn't face down the Crowd Control Warden is because of... Because I think I just want to play it face up next turn if I draw land number five. Yeah, now they're in a tough spot because do they attack with everything, right? And then I have to think about what kind of combat tricks they can have. There's just a lot to think about here. This could just be a large creature. But you know, by not attacking, I only take two. That's okay. I would love for them to flip up whatever this is, and then I just use makeshift binding to get some tempo back. I would absolutely love that. Okay. I guess they're just going to play another face down card here.
All right. Um, it's not blocking. That's the way I look at it. And I'm just going to play this face up. I'm happy to trade that face down card for another face down card on their side, given our life total. Unlikely for them to have a second way to kill. I mean, they could, obviously, but they use their makeshift binding already on my 2-4. So if they have another one, it's kind of like, yeah, it can happen, obviously. But there's no pump spell that I'm too worried about here. So yeah, no, this was... We got to stabilize here with Crowd Control Warden. So feeling very good about that. Need another land. I can also use Archdruid's Charm. Do I want to do that? Now well, let's just play this face down. The thing is, they didn't attack us last turn. They didn't attack us last turn. So I'm feeling pretty decent about this. If they flip over Crowd Control Warden, it's going to be an 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, so if they do attack me with a creature, I might be interested in a double block. Because they won't have the mana to flip it up and have a combat trick, most likely. This is kind of, I think, the final turn where we're kind of crossing our fingers. Uh, we're at 13. If we draw land at number 6, I mean, our hand is just beautiful. If we can draw land number 6, we are set. Absolutely set. We're getting to the point, though, where they're going to start flipping over just giant dinosaurs here. So we do still need to be careful at 13 life. Okay. They have three cards in hand, and they didn't play anything. So they're, yeah. So they're going to start flipping over some big stuff. Come on, deck. Come on. Just give me land number six. Just give me land number six. I don't, now I don't think I can afford to play the Loxed on Eavesdropper. I'm going to pass. It's so awkward because I can't do anything. You know what I mean? Oh, geez. Okay. So, so this, this part's interesting because they can, since they're going to kill my Gravestone Strider, I don't have the green source. So because of that, I'm just going to eat the Vengeful Creeper and just cast the Archdruid's Charm here. And then I lose my Gravestone Strider. And let's just exile that. Oh, actually, there's no escape four cards, right? There's no, yeah, maybe I should have not done that and kept up mana. Okay. So they have Tolsmir. Very good, very good. We're going to eat the wolf here. We got the, we got the, um, well, if they kill this, it doesn't even matter. And then we will play Sumala Sentry. Just get, like, I know we're drawing good cards, but just give us one land. One land next turn would just be so beautiful. So I can flip over my Vengeful Creeper. It's going to be a 7-7. I get to pump my sentries, get my angel back. It's going to just be so good. Just give me a land. One on tap land. All right. Shadowy Backstreet. They kept on top. All right. Some, something big. Something big on top. Looks like it's probably like a bite spell and they're just looking to see what they want to kill maybe. It could be a bite down on crime here. Maybe get a sentry off the battlefield here. Perhaps a face down card. They keep staring at their Tulsimir. Not going to be able to kill the crowd control warden. Unless they have like a combat trick too. No, just season consultant. All right. Yes, please play more mediocre creatures. I would love if that happened. Okay, no attacks. We drew the land. We drew the land. I'm going to take it easy this turn. They kept the card on top. They kept the card on top. They have two face down creatures still. 
They were representing a combat trick earlier. They could have definitely bluffed us. But I think I want this. Something tells me I want this 8-8 not turned sideways. Uh, I guess. I mean, I could have attacked with it, but it's fine. Uh, yep. That That is a major downgrade. I'm just going to say. I'm just going to throw that out there. That is a major downgrade. I, I had an 8-8, and now I have a 2-2. Unyielding Gatekeeper. Powerful magic card. Yeah, it turns out drawing that land was huge. And they couldn't kill my binding because I didn't target Tulsimir. Due diligence. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Huh. This is a very, very big attack with three mana. I think I just want to get my 2-4 here and just have that available as a blocker as well. So let's go do that. Okay, let's block here. Block here, block here. Oh, they could have Fuss Bother, so let's think about Fuss Bother. This can block here. I don't think I'm blocking the Museum Night Watch. Let's block here. Let's block here. If they have get a leg up, we're still not dead. We go to one. Get a leg up puts us to one. So these are some pretty good blocks. They don't have on the job mana up, which is pretty nice. Fuss is okay for them, but not insane. I mean, it's pretty good. Fuss is pretty good, not going to lie. I wanted to get the Tulsimir off the table here just so they, they stop gaining life. So I can try to race them and attack with my creatures. Um, plus three, plus three in Trample trades my Vengeful Creeper with the face down card. So that's not bad either. Plus three and plus three in Trample would kill the Tulsimir. Or no, Tulsimir would, would stay alive. Oh, it's just Auspicious Arrival. Okay. Hey, that's okay. I mean, they, they lost due diligence and their face down card here. I mean, they killed my Angel died, but like that's not even, that's not that bad, right? I don't, like, the, my board is so good, I don't even care about that loss there. Hold on. Yeah. Trying to still be somewhat measured here, because we're at 7, and I, it did feel... I mean, they could still have some kind of a trick. So this still allows us... This just leaves them no good attacks. And I want to spend my mana to flip over the Rift Burst Hellion this turn. And that'll be a lethal attack next turn. So that's going to force the action. And then uh, Makeshift Binding can also do some cleanup as well. But I wanted to keep the Makeshift Binding in hand for the following turn in case they drop something really big this turn. Like a, a large Crowd Control Warden, for example. Would, would be pretty good. I mean, it'd be a 7-7 seven, seven here, right? So I could use that. Uh, they, could, they could play that to trade with the Creeper. Okay. Vengeful Creeper down. All right. Boom. I guess I could have attacked with this. There was, this actually would have gotten in for one extra point of damage. Okay, and then we'll play Eavesdropper. Next turn I can attack with it with Vigilance. I think I'm interested in that. Nothing to makeshift binding here. 
Hey, what did I <laughs> what did I say about crowd control warden? Um, let's go ahead and crack this clue first. Okay. Let's play makeshift binding. Let's get crowd control warden. What 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 is what can you Oh airtight alibi Nice well that now I don't have a good attack That was the last card good beats Well it's good to know about That is good to know about All right we've got a game here I thought I was very far ahead but the crowd control warden into makeshift binding into airtight alibi Pretty pretty big game. Pretty big game. Ooh, that is also a very large game. I want to use this to counter something, I think. I don't think I want to counter that, though. I can also just use this as like a giant pump spell, right? Potentially. Hmm. I'm going to wait one more turn. I'm going to flip over my Rift Burst Hellion and attack with both next turn. Actually, I can play Glint Weaver and like put... um. A counter on each. I don't really want to wait around. There might be a block or two that might be great, that might not be ideal for us, but overall. Outside of the crowd control warden, all their creatures kind of stink. So having that extra 9-10 in play along with the 2-4-6 entries to attack with repulsive mutation seems okay. I'm going to kill the consultant over the night watch. Just to, so that they have a smaller board. Because if I kill the night watch, the I'm basically turning a 3-2 into a 2-2. And I'm not going to try to keep the Rift Burst Hellion alive just because I feel like it's... The best way I lose the, the the way I lose this game is I don't know just like something off the top and I just literally have counter spell put a counter on something right now, so that's pretty good. I'm just gonna counter this. And then attack. That should get it done. Yep, we did it. Oh, that was that was a good game, though. That was a good game. A lot of back and forth, jockeying for position. We've had a lot of good games for in this one, right? We've had a lot of good games in this one. Okay. Six and two. Six and two, playing for the trophy. Haven't trophied in a while. Playing against a rank 158 player. Let's get this done. We are once again on the draw. Come on. I'd like to go first. I'm going to keep the Analyze the Pollen for one more turn here. Probably going to use it to get an island, but we drawing that planes. All right, we drew the island. So we're going to hold the Analyze the Pollen now. Uh, Topiary Panther, yep. Yeah. Huh, what do they have here? It can be a slice from the shadows. So because it looks like it's most likely slice from the shadows, it's just investigator here, right? They can't it could be it could have been long goodbye as well. Alright, makeshift binding. <laughs> we have the answer for that eventually. 
I'm just going to play this face up though. Almost want to play this face up to be honest, but I don't think I will. I might actually just get a land here. Huh, let me think. No, I guess it's better to cycle this because I'm close to casting to analyze the pollen. So let's go ahead and get a forest with this and then play a face down vengeful creeper. Yeah. Analyze the pollen is basic. It's going to be a tutor here for the um the glint weaver. Oh no! Is this how it ends? This is how it ends. This is how it ends. Yep, 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 yep. Well, we're going to try to get there with... Uh I should have I should have blocked. What am I doing? I am uh, just a little bit sad that what what are, you're are you splashing projector inspector? What's happening here? Mythic players these days. Pitch the oh man, they went so deep. Uh, we're gonna get vein rippered though. We're gonna get vein rippered. Let's trade here. I should have. I took three unnecessary points of damage. That was really bad. I don't know why they attacked last time. And I don't know why I didn't block. I can't. I can't do all. I can't do the thing. You know what I mean? Well, we. You know our. Uh, you know what our other hope is that they just have nothing else. Right? Our other hope. The thing is, if they even play around. If they play around Rift Burst Hellion. God, we're at 10 life. Sheesh. Are we just dead? If they just attack with everything? All right, here it is. Okay. Please? Okay, we're, we, we're not dead. We're, not, we're just really low. Okay. There's hope. There's hope, team. There is hope. All right. Um, I'm just going to get this now just for mana purposes. Definitely getting um, the spider to get some life back. I can't cast it this turn. We're going to flip over um, Vengeful Creeper here to get back the Wojak Investigator. And then we're going to try to gain some life. And claw our way back into this game. What can this be? If this is a crowd control warden, I mean, I'm just... Let's go here. Wait, what is it? 6-5. Try again. All right, all right. <laughs> what what is this? There's a oh, they have their own analyzed. Okay, come on, you. That's not fair. You already have Vein Ripper. This is like come like you. You better get something reason. Come on. Can they cast this? They can't cast it yet. You play, they're just playing Ezrim and Vein Ripper and just no regard for uh, what's known as a reasonable mana base. They just don't care. They just don't care at all. Hmm. So that's a 5-5? Five five? One here. Maybe it's two on the Glint Weaver so I can block this thing. Because I don't want to go all in on this necessarily. I can still just put everything on here maybe. No, let's put two here. Oh, I could have attacked with Museum Nightwatch. Ooh, 
I gotta give myself the little slap here. Ugh. What am I doing? What am I doing? That was a mistake. I should have gotten in for three more. Okay, come on. I'm playing for the trophy. We're playing against a good player. Let's not... Let's not... Let's not mess around here. Okay. Okay. Oh, they drew the land. They drew the land. There's no way for me to fight it, huh? All right. Oh, I can kill it. I can kill it, actually. It's going to take both of my cards, though. It's going to take both of my cards. It might be worth, though. They're keeping up mana, though. Oh. Wow. Wow, that's really good. They're at 12 life. Ah, oh, maybe that's still not great. I have 8 mana. I can makeshift binding plus Archdruid's charm. I don't know if this is worth... Boom! Woo! Beat Ezrim Vein Ripper. Beat Ezrim Vein Ripper to end within the top 10 once again. Number nine was the highest we've ever gotten on this road. And we did it again. We got the trophy. We had some really tough wins in this one. I really, I mean, this is one of my favorite drafts, not in terms of power level, but there were just a lot of really close, tight games. And those are the ones, and especially if you come out on top, those are the ones that you really feel good about because you're like, you know, I had a lot of great games against a lot of good players with a lot of solid cards and we found a way, we found a way to get that trophy, right? With some really hard fought matches. So th this, this one feels especially good. It's not like we just necessarily ran people over. That's not really what this deck was trying to do, but it got a lot of value. We had good cards. Analyze the Pollen was incredible, incredible to go get us the Glint Weaver. Obviously, Investigator was good. And then we just had a nice mix of really good combat tricks and good late game with the double sentries and also these face down cards. They also did a lot of work. So uh, really, really, really happy with how this one ended. And now we're in the top nine. We're in the top nine. It's close. We're getting close. I'm sure we're going to eventually run into a pocket where we have to win three or four matches to move up a ranking. But I'm excited. I'm excited to be this far. And I'm excited that you were able to join me on this journey to rank one. If you enjoyed this content, if you, and if you wanted to support this channel in other ways, I did launch my Patreon channel. Shout out to all the current patrons. You have access to the Discord, and I do make a custom video for the Patreon once a month. That is something that's going to be coming up soon. I will be making one for March very soon. So if you wanted to check it out, you can definitely check it out. The link is in the description below. Also, I just want to say thanks for joining me here right now. Really appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. I'll catch you tomorrow.